welcome to soft talk today let's talk about a token gesture from the government of nepal to the very people this at a time when a long season of festivals is around the corner in nepal the air is getting colder and colder and uh, this mellow tune of Malasri, the classic Malasri, is like trying to fill the air, fill the people with joy in these grim times. But the people, they are a bit sad. Even in these uh, festivities, what is the reason of this sadness? that is the ongoing strife in the country. Such is the sadness that even the balmy rays of the sun haven't been able to pierce through, to just pierce the hearts, to make the hearts warmer, to warm up those hearts and remove that profound sense of sadness in the people. Despite the fact that Nepalese are considered one of the happiest lot around the world, there is no exact reason to be happy about what with the ongoing political instability, uh, food inflation, and this lack of joblessness and this lack of uh, rule of law etc etc but uh, the people they are one of the happiest peoples in the world let's talk about uh, this deepening sadness in nepali hearts what's the, what's the reason behind this profound sadness, one may ask. There are uh, reasons, one too many, behind that sadness. First of all, the society, it is not at peace with itself and the rest of the world. Social uh, religious strife is occurring with increasing frequency. Some years ago, parts of the far western region and the Tarai Madhes witnessed violence. That is well past us, but then uh, fresh incidents of violence, of strife have been occurring in this very peaceful country, a spiritual country in fact where different communities have been living together despite their diverse backgrounds, social, religious, ethnic backgrounds. Despite these backgrounds, these people, the communities have been living together in peace and tranquility for centuries. So what is the reason behind this latest speed of violence in the country, one may wonder. Not so long ago, eastern parts of the country erupted. However, before vested interests could use the fault line the fault lines in our society to drive the society further apart, better senses prevailed among us, making it clear that it is not easy to drive a wedge between peoples. As I said, they have been living together with their diverse backgrounds for centuries. Then uh, recently, Nepal guns. 
was the hot spot. Nepal guns flared up. This border town uh, flared up uh, for a brief time. What was the region behind this eruption in Nepal guns? Let me talk a bit about that also. This latest, uh, latest uh, speed of violence in Nepal guns. There were efforts to stoke up flames once again in another part of the country, the, uh, like uh, the border town of Nepal guns. But the good news is that those with sinister designs failed. They failed as the state acted on time and community leaders, religious, spiritual leaders also came together, proving once again that the tides, the bones that bind us together as a country, as a society, are far stronger uh, than uh, far stronger than the forces, uh, than the designs that uh, aim to break that bond, that have been repeatedly trying to break that bond. But this does not mean that this failure of those sinister designers, those plotters that have been trying to drive a wedge in Nepali society, uh, they have failed, does not mean that they won't try again. That does not mean that we should lower our guard against the elements trying to tear the society asunder. In fact, repeated bits to rekindle tensions mean that we should be more cautious, more alert than ever against those forces, those elements and their nefarious designs. But it is not only this strife, this violence that has been like plaguing the Nepali society, the peaceful, tranquil Nepal, Nepali society that has just come, that has just, uh, that has just been trying to leave this 10 year uh, long ins insurgency war, if you will, a war against a people, a country that has been trying to come over a decade long insurgency against it. Amid this has come this strife, but this is not the only factor that has been plaguing the Nepali society of late. Let me talk about that. I'm talking about soaring inflation. Uh, at this presentation about food inflation in particular. Uh, this at the time when major festivals are like at our doorsteps. The prices of food and other communities continue to head northwards toward Sagarmatha, if you will. This at a time when major festivals like Dasai, Tihar and Chhat are around the bend. And this is no good tiding for the people already reeling under political instability, joblessness, soaring market prices, uh, increasing brand drain, and uh, uh, rising corruption, the lack of ru uh, rule of law, this breakdown of uh, law and order situation in the country, and this uh, chronic lack of the absence of the state in the capital and other parts of the country. This 
auto lack this chronic uh, lack of market regulation uh, this uh, unabated black marketing and a continued disruption of the global supply chain mainly due due to the russia ukraine war that has been going on for more than a year in view of the festivities the government has decided to sell food communities uh, food commodities uh, sorry for that slip of tongue uh, the government the pushpakamal dahal government has decided to sell food communities at subsidized rates it plans to sell uh, food commodities in view of the festivities at subsidized rates throughout uh, a couple of outlets across the country the subsidies cover a wide range of food commodities uh, from um, the pulses to table sugar to table salt to mountain goat and anything uh, a lot of com commodities in between perhaps this move repeated every festive season in a ritualistic uh, manner it is also meant to undo the damage resulting from a short-lived decision of the government to hike the prices of petroleum products but a question arises will around three dozen fair uh, price shops spread too thin across the length and the breadth of the country will about three dozen shops a uh, fair price uh, fair price shops will be able to provide significant uh, significant succor uh, relief to a people reeling under political instability that has exacerbated uh, inflation, joblessness, corruption, and unrest, stymied economic growth, and pushed the youth in increasing numbers to foreign source, particularly in search of uh, those dirty, difficult, and dangerous jobs. Rather than short-term populist measures, the government should make sustained efforts to revive this ailing economy, the economy that has been on sickbed for quite some time. It should try to prevent Nepal from becoming a wasteland of sorts. Uh, how can it do it? How can it uh, prevent this slide into a wasteland, a field state of sorts, by curbing corruption, creating jobs for the youth, and boosting farm production through policy intervention that benefit uh, the real farmers. They can be some of the measures that can just turn the fortunes around, uh, these measures can revive the economy that has been uh, not in the pink of its health for like years on end. These measures uh, will go, uh, these measures I hope will go a long way in just uh, bringing the bringing the economy back to health, nursing the economy back to health. With this uh, note, I wrap up this edition of Soft Talk. I request you to subscribe to our channel, comment on our presentation and press that like button. Your support means an awful lot to us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.